Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial about snapping in Unreal Engine. This is an essential skill. Why? Because you're going to eventually find that you're going to need to create a set or a small environment or maybe even a big environment. And if you don't understand snapping, it's going to take a lot longer to get something done. So this is kind of a light introduction. There's a lot to it, but I'm just going to go over some of the basics to get you started and get your mind around it. One of the things that you're going to need for this is a wall. I'm just in a third person template. Just make sure you have some starter content. And then I'm going to want a cube too. So I'm just going to come up here to place actors and I'm just going to grab a cube and two. Just so that just so I have them in the scene. Then I'm just going to go ahead and close this up. I'm going to go ahead and actually move my wall in there right now and then I'm just going to close these windows so I have plenty of room to look around okay so let's get down here in the scene and get going on this first point is let's talk about grid snapping the grid snapping and the surface snapping are all available right up here the vertex snapping is I want to say hidden and it's really just a keyboard shortcut V but if we look at grid snapping, it's right up here. And by default, it's enabled. And you'll see it's set to increments of 10, right? This is for grid snapping, location. Basically, this is for rotation, and this is for scale. And all of them can be snapped. So once you know how to snap with one, you can snap with the others. The first thing is, if you wanted total control, and you don't want to snap anything, then just come up here and turn everything off. So now with the snapping off, you have complete fine precision and control. The only thing is that it's pretty visual. So you pretty much eyeball everything when you have the snapping off. So let's say I've got this cube down here, this blue one. Let me go ahead and turn the physics off. And let's go down and duplicate this. So one of the most important keyboard shortcuts of all time in Unreal is alt mouse button and drag so that you can duplicate. So I'm going to hold down alt left mouse button and I'm going to drag and I'm going to make another cube. I have snapping off so I can line these up but see and I have complete and total control here. It's really hard to see exactly at what point they're touching and maybe they're overlapping. I just duplicated one by mistake. That's another thing that's easy to do but let me just click this so you see how I have complete control, but I'm eyeballing it. And it's possible, it's possible that I'm overlapping, I, I don't know. But that could be good enough. So it may be that you don't even want to do snapping and you don't mind kind of coming along with each item and clicking and dragging and, do, and just giving it the old college try and seeing what looks right and just going on that. You could certainly do that. I'm holding alt left mouse button. So I could you could certainly do that with no snapping on at all. But it's not necessarily going to be as consistent and it's real hit and miss, but you can definitely you can definitely do it with no snapping whatsoever. So just know that if you get into trouble with snapping and you're not getting the results you want, just turn it off and you can exercise fine control over it. So that's the most important thing. And then just remember Alt, left mouse button, and you can duplicate all you want. In Unreal Engine, an Unreal unit, they call it an Unreal unit, is a centimeter. So everything's set up in centimeters, and these grids by default are 100 units or 100 centimeters across. So let's say we're going to now turn snapping on. So we're going to turn on grid snapping now, and this is going to be not for rotation or scale, but just for translation or transform. The higher this value is, the better the snapping is going to be. So like Let's say I want to move this. I have snapping on. So now I can come down here and move this in increments of 10, right? But see, it's not much better than if I almost just had it off because it's, I'm just moving in little tiny increments. So that's not necessarily getting the job done. But if I put this notice on 100, look how easy I move it now. It just goes, see how easy that is? And then let's say I want to go and duplicate now on a high increment 100 which is the whole grid size here if I press alt and left mouse button look how fast I can build my wall now why well, didn't alt left mouse button duplicate 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 and come up go this way see how fast that is I mean so you can just imagine if you were building a set 
this is going to be the much faster way to do it. So just know that the higher the value, the better the snapping is going to work out for you usually. I guess you could say this is a lot of snapping going on here. It is snapping, but it's such a small increment that it's almost like not snapping at all. The next point is, let's say I have an object like this is up in the air and I want to snap it on the floor. Well, there's a shortcut for that and it's shift plus end. And if I hit shift and end, E-N-D, see how it snaps straight to the floor? So this is a very, very useful and powerful shortcut to have is snap to the floor. And it doesn't matter where it is, like I can drag it up here or wherever, it could be a million miles away, it can be way up there, and shift in straight to the floor. So what's really going on here when it's snapping to the floor is our next snapping, which is called surface snapping. Okay, before I get started with the surface snapping, I want to let you know that this can be a little bit more challenging and I think it does take a little bit of practice just because sometimes I think it can be pretty finicky and so you just have to be mindful of what you're doing and things like that. It works in concert with the grid snapping. You'll usually probably want the grid snapping on in a low number because it's going to align with the surface it's going to snap, but it's going to snap in concert with what this is set to. So if you don't have this on, they call it surface snapping, but it's really going to snap with the grid snap still in effect. If you have this off, it'll align with the surface that you're pulling to, but then you'd have to, you'd have to try to move it to the level yourself. It's not quite the same as floor snapping. So if I turn this on, I can enable it. And then where it says rotate to surface normal, basically that means it's going to be in alignment with whatever surface that you're trying to snap it to. But it's going to snap in increment set here. I have surface snapping enabled right now. What's interesting about surface snapping, what's a little different about it, is that you have to grab it by the pivot point and then it's going to go in the direction that you're pulling it in whatever increments these are. Sometimes when you grab it, it'll just takes off flying because it's almost like a magnet and it wants to just go to whatever surface. We still retain control over the arrows, but you'll see when I grab this, the pivot point, I'll click on it and pull down. See how it jumped way over there? I just clicked on it and it went right there. So that's where I'm saying it's in alignment with the surface. It almost should be called surface alignment because that's really what it does because we still have our grid snapping in effect. So if I pull this up, you'll see now it's perfectly snapped to the surface. If I move this object over here, I can move it anywhere. It's going to retain whatever orientation that it snapped to. So if I drag this over here, even though this is a uneven surface, it's going to retain the last alignment that it had. So I don't know if surface snapping is the best name. I think it might better be called surface alignment because we still rely on our snapping control here to place it. So now let's say I'm going to bring this up here. Now, if I just pull this straight down, you'll notice it's not going to be in alignment with the surface. But if I grab the pivot point and bring down, see how it's realigned itself to the surface? See that? Now, if I move this off this plane, this incline, see how it retains its last snap? So now if I come back, I want to say I want to even it up here. I just grab it here and now it's leveled up to the ground. See that? So that's surface snapping, which is really handy. So it's it's pretty much snap to floor except it has the ability to be positioned on an incline. So this would be good for like if you're putting foliage on the hillside and you want the plants to be in the same direction as the the plane. Okay? So there's that. And then the last one is vertex snapping and that can be a little tricky too. So I can see why maybe people aren't as familiar with these tools as they should be just because they can be very finicky and but I think once you get some practice with them it becomes easier. So anyway, I was going to try to put two walls together but I think I'm just going to do these two. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off that surface snapping there. So make sure that's off. Okay, because that's going to cause us issues if we leave it on. So now with vertex snapping, every object is based on polygons. 
And then those polygons are based on vertexes, points in space, 3D space. What we do when we snap to vertexes, we can literally, we're doing point to point snapping. There's a vertex right on that corner there. Let's say I want to snap that point to this point here on this lower corner of this object here. So if you're going to do vertex snapping, the one thing you need to be able to do is to move the pivot point because that's normally where you're going to want to snap things. Like if I tried to vertex snap this, it's going to snap into the center of the object and I don't want that. Now to move the pivot point isn't that difficult, but the thing that's tricky about it is that you press Alt and the middle mouse button and it's very easy to hit the left mouse button instead. So it takes a little practice to get that clear because it's Alt plus the middle mouse button. So I'm going to move the pivot point from in the center to right here on this corner. So I'm going to hold down Alt and middle mouse button and I'm going to drag on this and you'll see it's snapping along the vertexes. And then I'm going to middle mouse button again and come up here to the top edge, right on the top edge, whoops, top edge. And then I'm going to drag out here middle mouse button to that very corner and make sure I'm on that corner. And I am. Once I have my pivot point where I want it, I just right click and go pivot, set as pivot offset. Then all I have to do is hold down V and click and drag this to whatever vertex I want to snap to. So here I'm going to hold down V and you'll see those blue dots come in. Sometimes it can be pretty wonky. It looks like I, I snapped to the vertex there in the middle. I'm going to hold down here and then I'm just going to move down one there. So now what I've done is I vertex snapped right on the very bottom there. So it's a real handy when you want to snap objects to each other. Now I guess I brought, since I brought this wall in, I guess I can do this real fast. Now I have my grid snapping on, so I'm going to select this. Here, I'm just going to hit shift end and bring it straight to the ground. And let's come here and look at this pivot point down here. So you'll see how it's in the center of the object. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit alt middle mouse button and drag that to the corner. Then I'm going to right click, set the pivot as there and then what I can do is I can vertex snap this I'm gonna go ahead and hit alt and left mouse button and I'm gonna drag off there and now if I come back over this way I should be able to vertex snap. now I could grid snap these together but I can also with that pivot point set I guess it's on this side I can snap this vertex point to this vertex point. So I just hold down V and left click and drag. And now I vertex snap those together seamlessly. There is a lot to it. So just remember you've got, you've got your grid, your surface, and your vertex snapping. They all have their place and their function. But they're essential tools, especially when you start building environments or even small little sets. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.